people went into that school that day and they knocked at my door and took my daughter. I'm not about to let that happen again. Evil knocked at my door and I'm pissed. Just like everyone out there, we're all pissed. We want our school safe. We want to know that you bring your kid to school in the morning, you're going to pick them up at 3.30, 3.15. They're going to come out and give you a big hug. And they're not taking us serious. Yeah, we're all pissed. We shouldn't have to live like this. And you know what? The teachers are pissed, too. We need to get behind the teachers, the students, the parents, and this shit can't happen anymore. Like I said, you heard me. We have to take our sneakers off to get on a plane, but a guy walked in right down the street with a rifle bag and shot and killed the loved ones of this community. Can't happen anymore. No, man. So I'm going to let you know. I'm going to work like you've never seen anybody work before. I haven't stopped. So this isn't anything political, okay? We're not here to politicize anything. It's not about a party, I've been telling everybody. It's not about that side, this side. It's about, we love our kids, okay? There's parents, there's grandparents here, there's aunts, there's uncles. We love our kids and teachers. So that's what it's about. It's not about anything political, what you see in the news. This is the news right here. This is the real news, okay? And we care. The American people care. And I'm here, and I'm listening. And they, like I said, they took my little girl from me. And we're gonna, we're gonna make a difference. So I got a lot of things I've been working on. And I'm gonna let my partner right here, Dennis, who's been with me, I, got, I think God sent it to me because I had like 2,000 messages on Facebook and I happened to open up Dennis and he came and he flew in and he helped me in Tallahassee and he was instrumental with me in getting that safety bill passed which is going to help all, help everybody in Florida. And I want one more thing for the community and the teachers. And everyone that lives here, Governor Scott put me on this commission. And I want to hear from you. If someone has something that they want to talk to me about, come and talk to me. Because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna let up in this commission. We're gonna turn over every rock. We're gonna find out what the hell went wrong, and then we're gonna prevent it. You see, my thing is this this already happened over here. So my kid's dead, and there's a lot of other parents here that have dead kids too. But I think I'm going to be able to prevent other kids from getting shot. So that's what it's about. So, like I opened my house to everybody here, I wanted you to feel what my family's like. That's why I invited everybody here, because family is everything. Right? And we all have family, and they're going to these schools. So, that's why I could have had it anywhere. I could have had it at a park. But I wanted you guys to feel the love how I speak and, and it's true. What you hear, what you see on the news is what you get when you see me. You have our support, Mr. Yeah. Okay, so let me, I'm gonna introduce uh, Dennis here and I wanna thank everybody. Thank you. Give it up for Andy. Give it up for one of the most bravest men in America right here. I'm gonna be really quick. Um, every year I take an annual trip with my daughter, who's 19 years old, only one year older than Meadow. Uh, they look alike. I'm sure if they were in the shopping mall together, you'd say, oh, wow, look at those two sisters. And so about two months ago, I was with my wife, and I've been in politics and news for 12 years now. I walked in and I said to her, I'm getting tired of this. I'm getting tired of the politics. I need to go out and make a film. And she says, well, we'll come to you. And I'm on the treadmill a couple of weeks later, and as that's happened, CNN, Fox, all showing the, the uh, Parkland area and what was unfolding. And I'm looking at it and I said, well, there it is. There's my documentary. This shit has to stop. And so I reached out to him after seeing him at the White House and I said, this guy gets it. It's not about 
taking away the guns or anything like that. It's about the kids. And so, this is important to say. So I had a short little plan with my daughter. We have this annual trip. And I said, let's go to Florida because we're thinking about buying a property here. But I'm telling you right now, I gotta lose the long sleeve shirts if I do. It's hot, man. <laughs> so anyway, I reach out to him and say, hey, listen, I'd like to just film you for 15 minutes for this documentary and maybe give you a little bit of media tip because they're gonna try to make you look like some radical Trump fan. So we worked together, and he left, and he went to face the nation, and my daughter looked to me and said, Dad, you gotta help that man. So what was supposed to be 15 minutes, my 19-year-old has pushed me into this, and I couldn't be happier because I absolutely love the politics. Yeah. And what's amazing about this man and his family and Julie, you know, they could very easily just be mad at God right now, mad at the world, and just hunker down and just be mad every day. And they are mad. But they're doing it to protect your kids, my kids, every kid that they'll never even meet. That's what's driving him and his wife and his family. And so let me finish by saying this. It's the most important thing you're going to hear today. And I ask you to please remain silent while it takes place. There was the March for Our Lives last weekend. And we didn't do anything but say, go right ahead. We support you, young people. But we think there was another message that needed to be heard. Yeah. And so young Hunter came to me and said, Dennis, can you help me write a speech? And I said, it needs to come from your heart. And so we had this unbelievably beautiful speech that was designed to bring the country together and to celebrate those 17 lives, including Meadows, that was lost on that day instead of getting political and they would not allow this young man to speak. So with a little bit of an ad lib, I introduce Hunter Pollock and his speech, and I ask you to listen to every word. First and foremost, I want to talk about my mom. She can't make it today. She appreciates all the support. Even though she's not here, her heart's with all of you, and she's, she's smiling somewhere wherever she is. So, so last week, we were in D.C. We went to the March for Our Lives, which, like he said, we support anyone fighting to make change, but... It kind of made me disappointed I couldn't speak. I mean, do they care about the victims' families or do they care about their political agendas? I mean, what is this? It's time for change. So I wrote this speech with, with the help of Dennis. It took a while, but at least, at least I can say it now. So on Valentine's Day, I had my heart broken. We all did. And there's too much sad irony in that to ignore. So today, instead of being able to speak in our nation's capital, I will be speaking at our home in Meadows Honor. As they listen to every word we say, I want to speak about our broken hearts and what we can do as a country to turn this heartbreak into a mission worth fighting for. In my heart, I know this is not a mission driven by politics, nor should it be dictated by the left or the right. This is not a mission specific to color, religion, or economics, but rather it's a mission of love. It's a mission of safety built upon a foundation filled with common sense and fueled by a common denominator that could bring together every American across this great country. The one common denominator we all share is a desire to live. We all want to live to the greatest possible, live the greatest life possible. My sister, Meadow Pollock, was living an amazing life filled with love, passion, dreams, family, and fun. She had so much to offer this world. She had so much ahead of her. But because we as a school, and we as a community, and we as a society, 
and we as a state and we as a nation fail to protect her. My baby sister is no longer part of this occasion we call life. What pains me most is that her beautiful life was not lost to an incurable disease or a freak accident. She's gone because our schools are not safe. She's dead because the madness of one young man and his determination to kill was greater than our desire to stop him. Remembering Meadow in the Parkland 17 is something we must all vow to here today. We must promise to take action each and every day until we protect the students of this country. We must protect our students and our schools in the same way we do. The patrons at an NFL stadium and the passengers at an airport and the diamonds in a jewelry store. We, the students of America, and the most valuable assets this nation has. Therefore, we hereby put all of the leaders and parents in this country on notice today. Today, we demand you to put a value on our lives and to protect us above all and everything else. We, as the students of this country, must take our anger and take our pain and our desire to live this life to the fullest, and we must channel it into a mission that is obtainable. One that can be achieved without heavy debate. One that everyone could agree upon today, tomorrow, and four decades to come. What happens in Parkland should have resulted in immediate action across America, but it has not. Two weeks ago, a student in Utah tried blowing up a school with a bomb. And then this week in Maryland, we lost another life in a school shooting. The weapon may be different, but the objective is the same. So we need to protect our schools from the killers that want to kill. The hatred and sickness that fuels a killer to kill innocent students is something most of us will never understand. But that doesn't mean it's something we can't ignore. We need to be on a mission to stop these monsters before they take action inside the school. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you all for being here. We need to be on a mission to stop these monsters before they take action in our school. We must demand our leaders to help those who are sick, but we also demand that they protect those of us who are not. In closing, I ask you to say my sister's name to yourself. It's such a beautiful name. Meadow. Meadow. Yeah, Meadow. If you say her name, it's impossible not to feel the beauty of who she was and who she will always be. Princess, princess. Meadow, it makes me think of a sunny day like this one. A day where the sun shines on our youth and shines on our desire to live a safe and happy life. I can feel Meadow right now. She's asking us to come together. She wants us to thank the families and parents of the victims like my dad, Andrew, who's worked tirelessly and I've watched him. He's the man and Mr. Ryan Petty and all others who are turning their grief into something positive. She says, thank you for continuing to fight for the survivors and students of all ages. Meadow is asking us to be smart in the love and to share the common denominator we share. Embrace this life, make the most of it, don't let it be wasted, and do not allow it to be taken away by a weapon of any kind. To my sister Meadow, who's up in heaven, I promise you here today that the dad and I, along with millions of people at our side, will do our part in making schools safe so that this never happens again. We vow to protect Americans' children in a way you should have been protected. We will keep them safe from the killers and all weapons they use. Until we meet again, Meadow, I miss you like crazy. I love you. We all love you. May you shine on us today and every day going forward. Give it up for Hunter, huh? Now this guy to my left right here.